Blessings and good morning, church. What a joy it is to have you here in this warm house of the Lord this morning with the sunlight beaming in. Some of you are thinking, I hope the sun moves a little bit so it doesn't beam on me quite so much. Um, what a joy it is to have you here, Martin Luther High School, sharing your gifts, your talents, and the abilities that God gave you with all of us. That makes me happy, right? This is my happy face. Now that we got that happiness out of the way, let's direct our attention to the screens and get some announcements. What if you knew that just a few moments of your time could change or even save somebody's life? Every two seconds in the United States, somebody needs a life. Unfortunately, fewer than 5% of the people that are eligible to donate actually do. So what about you? January the 23rd is HCL's Winter Blood Drive. It's so easy to sign up for an appointment. You can do it on the website, or you can call Julie Crow in the church office with your questions. We'll be hosting our quarterly photo shoot for new members to get their photos taken for the church directory. We are also inviting members who need retakes or those who missed the first directory photo shoot. Visit hcl.org for more details and for the link to schedule your appointment. Financial Peace University began about 20 years ago, and now today we've had over one and a half million families go through this course. Well, for the kingdom of God, if the people of God were out of debt, how much of this world could we as believers change? Let's start out 2017 on the right foot and refocus on Jesus Christ with worship and Bible study. Tuesday night's Women of Faith Bible study will focus on 12 women of the Bible to show how their lives relate to our lives here in 2017. On Tuesday nights, Pastor Keith will also be hosting a study and we will be examining the parables of the Bible. There's 
something for everyone, so come and be with us in worship and the word. For any other information, please contact us at bcr.org. With announcements out of the way, we have a chance to stand up. We have a chance to share the love, the peace, and the joy of knowing Jesus Christ with all those in this house of worship this morning. We begin with the call to worship. In this epiphany season, the light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. Dear Lord, shine on us today as we worship you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. We continue as we confess our sins and graciously receive God's forgiveness. God of all grace and mercy, come to the aid of your people, turning us from our sin to live for you alone. Give to us the power of the Holy Spirit that we may confess our sins and receive your forgiveness. Gracious God, have mercy on us. In your compassion, forgive us our sins. Empower us by your Spirit so that we might live out our faith to the honor and glory of your holy name. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you and forgive you all your sins. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen.
was just saying about the identity of the church, about that which Christ gave his life, his life up for. And now we confess and we profess in the affirmation of faith how we belong to that church. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. I invite you to be seated. Our scripture reading this morning is from the book of Isaiah, chapter 60. Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. For behold, darkness shall cover the earth, and thick darkness the peoples. But the Lord will arise upon you, and his glory will be seen upon you. And nations shall come to your light, and kings to the brightness of your rising. Lift up your eyes all around and see. They all gather together. They come to you. Your sons shall come from afar, and your daughters shall be carried on the hip. Then you shall see and be radiant. Your heart shall thrill and exult, because the abundance of the sea shall be turned to you. The wealth of the nation shall come to you. A multitude of camels shall cover you, the young camels of Midian and Ephah. All those from Sheba shall come. They bring gold and frankincense, and shall bring good news. The praises of the Lord. Amen.
Kids, come on up. There you go. You can make it. So I want you to think about Christmas with me, okay? And I want you to start thinking about it this way. I want you to try to answer this question. How long is Christmas? How many days is Christmas? Are there any songs that you know? Yeah, how, how long is Okay, no, it's more than two. Yep, 12, right? Did we sing the 12 Days of Christmas, that song where the person gets a bunch of crazy presents, right? So the 12 days of Christmas start on Christmas Day, right, when we celebrate that Jesus has come and he's come for us, and it goes for 12 whole days, and then the very next day after that, day number 13, is what we're celebrating all weekend this week. It's called Epiphany. Have you heard of Epiphany before? What is it about, you know? Yeah, what do you, yep, we celebrate uh, on Epiphany, that that's when the wise men came and they showed up to see Jesus for the first time. What did they follow, I wonder? How did they know where Jesus was? Go ahead and say, shout it out. What did they see? A star. They saw a star, right, a special star, and Epiphany is all about light shining in the darkness. The Bible says about Jesus that he is the light of the world. And so in that manger, his light began to shine in a new way. Right in the middle of where all of his people were, it began to shine in a new way. Now, I want to ask you this. What's better, light or dark? Light, right? How many of you like the dark and you like kind of when you can't see anything at all and you, all the noises just kind of don't make any sense. How many of you would rather have a light? Do any of you sleep like with a night light on or a flashlight on? Why? Why? So you, so you don't get scared, right? So you can see what's going on so that if you have to get up in the nighttime, you can, you know, not trip over things and that kind of thing. So Jesus says that his light shines in the darkness and the darkness runs away whenever Jesus' light shines. Now, do you know what else Jesus says? He says about you and me and everyone else who bears his name. He says that you are the light of the world. That his light shines in you and shines through you so that you now are the light of the world. So just like you keep a light in your room maybe so you can help uh, not be scared or so you can see where you're headed. We are that light for other people so that we can show them the way so that we can help them see the truth of Jesus' love and show them where he is. So let's pray about that, this epiphany, okay? Let's fold our hands and bow our heads and picture Jesus on his throne. And then um, we're going to pray to him, and I'll say words, and you can say them after me, okay? Dear Jesus, thank you for being the light of the world, for shining in us, and through us, and through us. Help, us help us to shine your light, shine your light. And, share your love and share your love wherever we go. Wherever we go. Amen. Amen. Thank you for coming this morning. You can make your way back to your seats now, okay?
as we come to the point of the service where we're going to look at God's Word, I invite you to grab a Bible if you have one. If not, we have some for you. The red ones are there on the racks in the aisles. Um, we're going to be using those this morning. Um, if you're using a red Bible, you're going to find page 619. Uh, that's Isaiah 60. Uh, if that's too much of a height for you, um, I suppose you could also use your welcome folder that has the scripture lesson in there too. But as we kind of start thinking about what Epiphany is all about and this interplay between light and darkness, I want you to think about a time when you have yearned for the morning to come. Has that ever happened for you? Like perhaps it was the night that you did not sleep because you tossed and turned or you had that head cold that wouldn't let you breathe as you laid on your back or uh, maybe there was something you were anticipating that was happening the next day and you were just too keyed up to fall asleep and so you tossed and you turned until the sun started peeking through your window and you thought okay at least I can start my day now um, I don't know about you I uh, we take road trips as a family and because I don't like wasting daytime, I usually drive at nighttime. And there's always a second wind that comes after driving through the night as the sun comes up. Right? Any of you experience that? Where you feel like you're a brand new person and like you have energy now that you didn't have before? The light is a good thing. The morning is a fantastic thing. Have you found that our world is somewhat of a dark place? So think physically, right? There's this whole thing that happens in the wintertime up north. Um, sad seasonal affective disorder, right? Where there's not enough light, and so we get depressed, right? There's the darkness that you see as it comes across the TV during the news hour, right? Everything from opioid deaths on a spike to addiction that can't seem to go away, to uh, cancer, to um, people shooting each other for no apparent reason whatsoever, um, to terrorism, to any number of things that makes you like turn off the news as quickly as possible, or uh, just turn it off until Jimmy Fallon comes on after the news, right? Our world is a dark place, and, and sometimes that darkness even comes home to roost. Right? And those things that we write down in the prayer book, those things that, that keep us up on nights where we're not excited for the next day, but we in fact dread it. The darkness that kind of finds its way into our heart, um, spiritually speaking, that, that seems to happen much more slowly than the lights flicking off. Right? It's as if someone, spiritually speaking, has sort of just used the dimmer switch so slowly that all of a sudden our eyes adjusted to the point so we, we could see in the near dark and then we find ourselves blinded by the darkness. The people of Israel in Isaiah's day were actually not a whole lot different from us as we yearn for this light to come. Not a light that simply shines through the window to awaken us, but, but this light that would kind of dispel the darkness that we see as we cry out to our God, what are you doing about this? The people in Isaiah's day, they had run after um, wealth and strength and power in foreign kings and, and foreign gods. And God himself had said to them, there is a punishment coming. You're going to go into exile just like your brothers and sisters in the north went into exile. And as they were awaiting that punishment and seeing it foretold and hearing of how dark it would in fact be, that they would be scattered throughout the earth, that Jerusalem would fall and be laid waste, Isaiah speaks these words towards the end of his book, towards the end of his ministry. He says, arise and shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. For behold, darkness will cover the earth, and thick darkness all the nations, but the Lord will arise upon you, and his glory will be seen upon you. Even in the midst of darkness, there is this promise of light that the Lord himself would, would shine on his people, that he would make them peculiarly unique. That was redundant and hard to say. 
that they would be strange, that in the midst of all the peoples covered in darkness, they would sit basking in his light, and they would serve as a beacon for his hope. That all of the nations, and, and Isaiah goes on, that all of the nations that they used to run to for hope and for strength would in fact now run to them and find their glory that they see in God, that they would find salvation in the one who shines on his people. We see this coming to a culmination in the person of Jesus. We see 700 years before, before Jesus was born, Isaiah speaking about the babe in the manger who would come and dwell among his people, the one whom John calls the light of the world that shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not been able to, to grab onto it, to hang on to it, to, to get its hooks in, to overcome and destroy it. But the darkness never wins when the light of God is around. And John says that, that this light of the world was the babe in the manger, the, the one who became flesh for you and for me, and, and he, in fact, as the light of the world, gave sight to blind people. As the light of the world, he healed their diseases. He chased away their demons and their darkness and made them well again, and that this light of the world would even overcome the darkest of darkness in death itself as he laid in the tomb, went to hell, and overcame it for you and for me on his resurrection day. So that one day, on a day that John sees that you and I have not yet seen, he would call out to us in our grave, Arise, shine, for your light has come. Revelation 21, near the very end of the Bible, the very end of God's story of salvation for us, John sees this vision, and he sees God speaking to his people, saying, Now the dwelling place of God is with mankind, and they will be my people, and I, will, I myself will be their God, and I myself will be in their midst, and I will shine on them so that they do not need light. And all of those things that we pray about and cry out to God for and maybe even get a little frustrated at him for, death and mourning and crying and pain, those are gone in this vision when this God speaks on that day. He says there will not even be a need for the sun. That thing that we long for in the wee hours of the morning to, to just peek up over the horizon again and, and pink up the sky again so that we can have hope just one more day. Our God says that on that day there is even no need for that because he himself and his glory will shine on his people in that day. But like the people of Israel to whom Isaiah spoke, you and I don't live in that day. At least not yet. But it doesn't mean we're without hope. The babe in the manger came, and we celebrated it on Christmas, and we continue to celebrate it until it's warm enough to take our lights down. And this weekend, we celebrate Epiphany, that those of us who have seen the babe in the manger, those of us who have experienced his washing through the waters of our baptism, those of us that have, that have eaten of his flesh and of his blood and been regenerated and renewed by the power of his spirit there, that we would remember our identity. For this one who came as the light of the world turns and he says to his disciples, you are the light of the world. You are the city on the hill. You are the one through whom people will know me and my light. You are the one through whom this hope will be told and passed on. You are the one who through shining out my light will draw people to me so that they can find their way back, so that they can know this salvation that you know, so that together, along with all of those who call upon the name of Jesus, we would shine brightly, we would remember that this is the church's identity. This is who we are. This is why Jesus came. This is why he shines on us. John would say to us, as the apostle that he was, he wrote this down in one of his letters to the church, he says that, that when this God who is light shines, 
the darkness is made apparent. So personally speaking, this is where we get our liturgy for confession, right? 1 John chapter 1, verses 7 and 8. It says, God is light, and in him there is no darkness at all. So that if we claim that we want to walk alongside him and yet hide in the darkness, we're just lying. But if we come into his light and we confess our sins to him, he washes it clean. He makes us new from the inside out, and he fills us with his light so that we would then shine as lights in the darkness. So that wherever we go, we would carry it with us. So that the darkness that, that kind of pervades the rest of the world and, and maybe even our own homes would be pushed back into the corner yet again. And then as Christian people, practically speaking, as the darkness encroaches, it sometimes overpowers us because we are not Christ. And so we come back to a place like this one and we again hear his word, we again confess our sins, we again receive the supper and, and his light chases out our darkness and fills us with his light so that we would then shine it out and then we go back out in the world to shine a little longer and then after a while we, we come back to where his light shines on us and this is the way life is until that day when he shines on all of us in all of his glory when all of our darkness is killed and lying there in the grave never to rise again and our God calls out arise shine for your light has come until that day dear friends may the light of the world shine in your heart may he shine through you so that even in the midst of this darkness, there would be glimmers of light that would point the way to Jesus. For his glory, amen. We pray. Lord Jesus, we receive your gifts, we have received your spirit, and so we offer these tithes and offerings to you. And we ask you that you would use them, humble as they may be, to change the world. To bring your kingdom into our midst, both here and around the globe. We pray that you would do these things to the glory and honor of your name. Amen. At this time, the ushers will collect the tithes and the offerings for the day.
All right, brass. All right, choir. Who is responsible for all of you this morning? Who's responsible? Who's responsible for you, Jensen? Say it like you mean it. Say it a little bit more like you mean it. Your father, and is your father here today? And how is your father responsible for all of these kids? He's the principal. So let's invite that principal forward this morning. And she's thankful that I'm done talking to her. <laughs> so now I get a chance to talk to you and say thank you for bringing these wonderful kids here. And tell us why they're here. Good morning, everybody. Good morning, Bonnie. How are you? <laughs> she's a redhead. Go ahead and wait. All right. Uh, Greetings on behalf of uh, your three high schools, Milwaukee Lutheran, Lake Country Lutheran, and of course Martin Luther High School. And this is my friend Marshall, and I'll introduce him here in just a minute. Uh, thank you uh, for your partnership, beginning with the pastors and Chad and Christian, you guys are fantastic, and Pastor Speaks, all the way through to the school staff, and down to the sacrificial giving and service, and just thank you. Th thanks to all, what you all do, these folks like Mr. Franz and Ms. Kinchy Walter get a chance to do what they do. Two really quick numbers. Roughly 20% of our 500 kid population, student population at school, 20% of our students come from this congregation. And 20% of our teaching staff comes from this congregation. So intertwined and important and meaningful and aligned are the ministries of Martin Luther High School and this great ministry. And just be comforted, be uh, uh, heartened by the fact that there are amazing and successful things going on out of these young people through these amazing teachers. Finals week is this week, yay, finals week. And a really successful weekend with these guys in the fine arts who are doing a great job. Basketball sweeps all this weekend, wrestling, swimming, and all those things. Lots of great and successful things are going on. And chief among them is my friend, Marshall Liao. Did I say it right? He's actually Liao. <laughs> He'll go with that. He's been trying to be nice to me all morning. And he is from where? Xingyu, China. Xingyu, China. Marshall has been with us for three years. This is his third year with us, and he carries a 3.6 grade point average. He's involved in three sports, right? Three sports, including wrestling, and they're doing very, very well. He intends to, he will be graduating with honors and going on to Oregon State University after next year. What are you going to study? Um, sports management or sports reporting as manager. Sports management or sports reporting, and unfortunately, he's a fan of the Houston Texans. Uh, oh. <laughs> Go Texans. <laughs> <laughs> and most important out of all those things, uh, at 11 o'clock this morning, this young man is going to be baptized into the body of believers here at Hales Corners Lutheran Church. So on behalf of all of us at Martin Luther High School, thank you for allowing us to do what we do. Thank you, guys. I appreciate it. Not only do we have a prayer of thanks for uh, upcoming baptism at 11 o'clock, but we also have this prayer book that's in the atrium before and after service. If there's ever anything on your heart that you want carried to the Lord in prayer um, during a worship service, when those dark times creep in and you're asking for the Lord's light, then um, we ask that you share those prayers here. We have a prayer of, Lord, thank you for your gift of 22 years when I met the love of my life. A thank the Lord for positive movement for a drug-free son with an exclamation point. For Diane and Todd with upcoming surgery this week. For a dear friend undergoing surgery tomorrow to remove a tumor on her brain. A prayer for strength and healing in all troubled marriages. And then a prayer for her father-in-law's health. These are the things that we're gonna take as the body of Christ to God this morning in prayer. And I invite you to rise, humble your heart, calm and center your mind, Let's go to our God in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we give you thanks um, for sending the gift of your Son, for that gift, for being the light of the world. And when they asked Jesus what he was doing and why he was here, he said, I'm here to seek and I'm here to save the lost. And before that gift, Lord, each and every one of us was the lost. But through the gift of your Son, through the gift of the Holy Spirit, Lord, we rejoice with you and for you. We rejoice, Lord, as a church. We rejoice over the fact, Lord, that when the rest of the world is in a dark moment, we, Lord, know you. 
And I ask, Lord, that um, for each and every one of us that struggles in faith, I ask, Lord, that um, you turn that dimmer switch back up through the gift of the Holy Spirit, Lord, that we would be granted more faith. And for each and every one of us that has made mistakes and have sinned against you, Lord, I ask that you let us celebrate what happened on the cross. I ask, more importantly, Lord, that you let us celebrate what happened when your son triumphed over death and the devil. And then, Lord, I ask that you bring us back to our baptism and remember that we have been made new in you. And as Christian taught us, we are the light of the world. And I ask, Lord, that you don't let that light um, ever be overcome by darkness. I ask, Lord, that you let our hearts be different, I ask, Lord, that you let our lives be different, I ask, Lord, that you let our homes be different, I ask, Lord, that you let us um, interact with our family members differently, I ask that you let us interact with our workplaces differently, and that everyone would know that we are yours, and that we carry that light into the world on behalf of you as your gift. So, Lord, keep us strong in faith, and hear us, Lord, as a church, as we pray the prayer that you have taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup, and after he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Take and drink, each one of you, for this cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is poured out for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Dear friends in the Lord, your Lord is here in your midst for you. Physically present, truly present, his body and blood here for you. That you would hear from heaven his love for you. That you would receive once again the assuredness of your forgiveness of sins, that your faith would be strengthened for the walk that you have ahead of you, and that you would glorify him with your life. For these reasons, we celebrate this meal together, and we sing together.
As a church, we rise, and as a church, we give thanks for the light that has just been shown to us. Thank the Lord and sing his praise. Let all who seek the Lord rejoice and bear Christ's holy name. Send us with your promises, O God, and lead us forth in joy with shouts of thanksgiving. Alleluia. Usually, as a pastor, we have the chance to say the blessing over you, and today you also have the blessing sung over you. As God's family, we are called and gathered together to worship, grow, and be sent to make a difference in the world for Christ. We are living on purpose. May you shine like the stars in the universe as you hold out his word of life. Amen. Amen. 